Welcome to our lecture online. We're now finally ready to start talking about phasers. Phasers are vector representations of sinusoidal functions, which of course in turn are representation of the voltages and currents in circuits that have sinusoidal voltage sources. In those representations, they represent both the magnitude and the phase angle of those sinusoidal functions. Now here we have a graphical representation the red line here, the red vector here, represents a phaser. The length of it is the magnitude, and then we have the phase angle relative to the horizontal axis, which, if you remember right, we use that to represent the positive cosine function of a sinusoidal function. We're going to call the horizontal axis the real axis, and the vertical axis the imaginary axis. Notice that we have an x and a y component relative to the vector, which represents the what we call phasor. R is the length of the vector, Z is also considered the length of the vector. Now we use Z and R in particular formats. We have three formats to represent that vector representation or that phasor of a sinusoidal function. We have the rectangular form, the polar form, and the exponential form. The rectangular form has an x and a y component, but since the y component is in the imaginary axis direction, we have to use j, which is a square root of negative 1. So the magnitude z, or maybe z in this case is, is, is a vector where we have an x and a y component, so z is equal to x plus j times y. We can also represent that in the polar coordinates, r being the magnitude of the vector, and phi here being the phase angle, so z equals r, and then we have that symbol, the angle for phi, and then we can also have the exponential form where z is equal to the magnitude z times e to the j times phi. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show how we can go from one form to another form. Let's say we want to go for, from the rectangular form to the polar form, which means that the magnitude r is equal to the square root of the square of the x component plus the square of the y component. And if you then want to find the phase angle, phi, that's equal to the inverse tangent of the y component divided by the x component. So this is how we can take the x and the y in the, in the rectangular form and convert it to r and phi in the polar form. Also, realizing that if we want to go from polar to rectangular, we can say that x is equal to, that would be the magnitude r times the cosine of phi, and we can say that y is equal to r, the magnitude, times the sine of phi, and then if we want to write that in terms of r cosine phi and r sine of phi, and we know then of course that z is equal to the sum of those, we can then write that z is equal to x, which is r times the cosine of phi, plus j times y, which would be j times r times the sine of phi, and if we factor out an r, we can write that z is equal to r times the cosine of phi plus j times the sine of phi. And then if we remember that the exponential form e to the j times an angle, e to the j times an angle, can be written as the sine of the, oh, not the sine of the angle, that's the wrong order. This has to be the cosine of the angle phi plus j times the sine of the angle phi. You can then see that if you replace this by that, you can then write that z is equal to the magnitude r times e to the j times phi. And now you can see we have all these various forms with which we could represent phasors. We can have the exponential form. We can have here kind of the quasi-rectangular form, although x and y can be expressed as a cosine and the sine of the phase angle phi, or we can write it like this, or we can simply say that z is simply equal to x, the real part, plus j times y, the imaginary part. So those are all the various forms in which we can represent the sinusoidal voltage or current function, and finally what we're going to do is then learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide these functions, take the inverse, take the square root, and so forth, 